Enrollment is there, but I think the teacher is not yet there. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome again uh, to the Isbet University virtual seminar. And today is going to be a very interesting topic uh, about entrepreneurs. And as you all know that uh, Uganda is a thriving economy with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, yeah, this is this case says that uh, Uganda is next to Thailand in creating entrepreneurs. So we need to leverage those skills and uh, create more entrepreneurs and uh, and so that uh, the economy thrives. And today we're going to have a seminar by Mr. Uh, Samanda Ramant, who will be taking us to, to, to this uh, seminar. And I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Samanda Ramant to uh, take over. Thank you. Good morning, members. I hope I'm loud and clear. As uh, Dr. Vivek has introduced me, my name is Semanda Ronald. I'm uh, an assistant lecturer at Isbat University, and I'm in the area of finance and accounts. And as you are all aware, Uganda as an economy, we are not doing well financially, we are not doing well economically. So many students remain unemployed despite having all the degrees. So today we are here to learn on how we can become entrepreneurs after university. So I want to take you through some of the skills, some of the techniques that we can embrace so that we, after even studying at university level, we should be able to create our own jobs. Okay, so this is what we are going to cover today. For example, what courses should you undertake in order to help you boost your skills as a student so that tomorrow, even if you're not employed, you can start your own business and run it successfully. So these are issues we are going to cover today. And this is going to be an interesting topic as you're all aware. So I'm going to share the PowerPoint that we shall run throughout for the next one hour. So I wish you a lovely stay. And please, whatever I'm going to discuss is what we teach at Isbat University. So when you come and join us, you'll be able to get these skills here at Isbat University so that you don't remain unemployed, okay? You can run your own business. You'll be able to know how do we mitigate against risks You'll be able to know how do we source finance to invest in a business. Okay, at the end of the day, you become successful as an individual. Remember, if you're successful as an individual, even the community around you also becomes successful. So let, let me share the PowerPoint, then we start the discussion today. Okay, members, like I gave you the introduction, which I'll repeat for some of you who have just joined us. My name is Semanda Ronald. I'm a lecturer at Isbat University in the area of the Faculty of Business and Finance. I specialize in accounts and finance, but today we shall look at one of the most interesting topics around the world, especially for the youth, okay? Because like I began in the introduction that so many youth, especially here in countries that are still developing, remain unemployed despite going to universities and achieving all those degrees, getting a job has become a very big problem, especially here in Uganda. 
So what we shall cover today is to prepare you on the right skills, okay, that can embrace you to start your own businesses, even after universities. For example, the most successful people on the planet are those that are running their own businesses. So in order to run your own business, there are certain skills you must learn, there are certain risks you must understand. Okay, so these are issues we shall discuss when you are looking at um, how universities can create entrepreneurs, okay? Now, like I began earlier, I told you that all, whatever I'm going to go through with you today, all these things are taught here at Isbat University. So when you join us, you'll be able to learn these skills so that they can help you as a person. And remember as a person, once you develop, you develop even the community around you because you start creating jobs for the community, okay? So we shall start by looking at how universities can create entrepreneurs. Now, before we start, there are things you should know. One is, who are these entrepreneurs? Okay, now we are going to know that entrepreneurs are in different categories. Okay, there are even some who argue that becoming an entrepreneur, you, some are born entrepreneurs. Some say no. Some people are actually made to become entrepreneurs through education. So those are issues we are going to, and arguments we shall go through to see how do you become the right entrepreneur who is successful. For example, the Bill Gates you all see or hear about are all successful entrepreneurs, but how have they achieved this? They were able to achieve this by learning how to become the right entrepreneurs, okay? So our learning objective, so what we are going to cover today with you is we should, we'll be able to understand the following, okay? So one, we shall first of all be able to discuss whether entrepreneurship can be taught at school, at home, or people are born entrepreneurs. So by the end of today, you'll be able to understand if we can teach you to become entrepreneurs or if we cannot. So those are arguments we're going to go through with you today. Then from there, we should be able to understand who is this entrepreneur or what is entrepreneurship, okay? Because every day we talk of Uganda should have more entrepreneurs, more entrepreneurs, but what does the term entrepreneurship mean, okay? Then from there, we should also be able to know the different categories or the different types of entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs are of different categories. So we should be able to understand the different categories of entrepreneurs, especially most of you who are already running your businesses. You want to know the kind of business you're running falls under what category? What type of entrepreneur are you? Okay. Then we should also be able to understand why would you want to become an entrepreneur? So is it important for one to become an entrepreneur or it is not important, it's a time of waste. So these are issues we're going to learn with you today in this remaining one hour. Okay, then finally, we shall see what are those motivators? What motivates you to become an entrepreneur? Okay. Why do you want to become an So what are those achievements you want to achieve as an entrepreneur? Because there are so many benefits we can get out of becoming entrepreneurs. So those are some of the drivers we are going to also discuss, and that will be our last learning objective. Now, before we move into the topic of today, we'll start by understanding a few fundamentals about, about becoming the right entrepreneur. One, building a culture of entrepreneurship requires fundamental thinking of our education systems, which I'm sure you agree with me, okay? If you want to produce the best entrepreneurs today, we need to go back and rethink on some of the changes we need to make through the education systems, okay? Now you realize that for you to become a good entrepreneur, you must, the moment you join a university, you should start thinking because entrepreneurship is about thinking. You should start thinking on how to solve the current problems society is facing because the most successful entrepreneurs are those that have worked on solving issues that society faces. 
For example, Bill Gates came and solved the issue of communication by producing to us what we, are, what we are using today. He came up with the idea on how he can solve the issue of communication. And that's why he developed softwares that have helped the entire world. So if you want to become a great entrepreneur, one, it has to begin by the education system. So how are we teaching you to become an entrepreneur? Okay, we need to be more practical. We need to teach you practical skills. So building you as an entrepreneur begins from the thinking, the education, systems, especially both formal and informal, as well as the way we as lecturers or educators are trained. So the people who teach you to become entrepreneurs, first of all, what kind of businesses are they running? Are they also entrepreneurs? Because you cannot speak about entrepreneurship when you as an individual, you're not an entrepreneur. Okay? Then we should also be able to know how we examine you Okay. And secondly, what are some of the rewards and recognition that can be the incentives for you to try and become an entrepreneur? Because today, you will not tell someone to start a business if he or she is not going to benefit from it. Okay. Okay. Now, as you can see, two images. These are people who are having an argument. So we're going to see what is the argument they have? So as you can see, there are two images where you are. I think you can be able to see them of two individuals who are into a discussion, but want to see what are they discussing? For example, one says, oh yes, can we teach you to become an entrepreneur? So this is what we are asking. So one is asking, can we teach you to become an entrepreneur? One individual says, there's no way you can teach someone to become a successful entrepreneur. That person must be born an entrepreneur. So the question is, for you who are listening to us, can we teach you to become a successful entrepreneur or people are born with the traits or characteristics that make them entrepreneurs, okay? So some are saying, you cannot teach someone to become an entrepreneur. Oh, you cannot teach someone to become a successful businessman. The other one says, no, we can teach you to become an entrepreneur. So these are issues we are going to discuss with you. Okay. Now, for you to become an entrepreneur begins from whether we can teach it or not. So the question today is, can we teach you to become a successful businessman? or a successful entrepreneur who is going to one, solve issues in society. Now that begins from you, okay? But before we see whether we can teach you or not, one is that there are beliefs that some people are born entrepreneurs. That's a belief. Some people have beliefs that we cannot teach you to become an entrepreneur. People are born naturally entrepreneurs. But the argument is, those who are born to be entrepreneurs, what is their success story? Have they made it in life? Are they successful as entrepreneurs? Or those that we believe are born entrepreneurs also have a limitation. Because, for example, you imagine you have not gone to school, you start your own business because people say you're born with those, those characteristics that make you a great entrepreneur. Are you able to become successful? All the challenges you'll face. So as we are going to discuss, you realize that even if you're born to be with the traits or characteristics that make you a successful businessman, it also means it is important that you get a bit of education because the world has changed. Technology is changing. So many things are changing around the world, which require you to know as an entrepreneur, okay? so. You can be successful because you're born as an entrepreneur, but you'll have so many limitations or challenges you face. Okay? And that's why it is important that you get a bit of education to prepare you for such challenges you'll face. Now, some say entrepreneurs are socially prepared. So there are those who say that the community around you may prepare you, your family may prepare you to become a successful businessman, or your friends can influence you and prepare you to become a successful entrepreneur, okay? 
or some say that you can only become a successful entrepreneur if the kind of education that we give you actually prepares you to become one. So we're going to see which one works today. Is it that people are born entrepreneurs? Is it that um, the society around you makes you become a great entrepreneur? Or it is the education sector that prepares you to become a successful entrepreneur, okay? So remember, there are arguments. Some say people are born entrepreneurs or successful entrepreneurs. Some argue and say, no, the society around you prepares you to become one. Or some say it is the education systems that make you a successful entrepreneur. Now, these are arguments, but at the end of the day, we should be able to know which one works in the world of today. Okay, now for us to teach you to become an entrepreneur, for example, if we believe that the education sector or systems are supposed to prepare you to become a successful businessman or to become a successful entrepreneur, how should it be done? Now, this should be followed. For example, those that are supposed to teach you to become an entrepreneur should understand the following. So, for the education sector to teach you to become a great entrepreneur, there must be quality of education. Now, this quality of education begins from who is teaching. So for one to be a successful entrepreneur, it will begin with the person teaching you to become an entrepreneur. Like I said, those that are teaching you to become entrepreneur, one, they should one be people that are running already businesses, which means they have the experience, okay? They have the dynamics on how business runs. So someone who has never run a business, it's going to be very difficult to convince you to start a business if he or she is not running the business. So if the education sector is to teach you and prepare you to become successful entrepreneur, we need to know in that education or in that university, who is teaching you on how to become an entrepreneur, okay? The second is, what are they teaching you? For example, we have so many universities that teach you and prepare you to become entrepreneurs, which is good. But what are they teaching you? Now, today you should be learning the current trends in business because that is what the business requires today. We should know what are the new trending changes in the business because that is what makes you a successful entrepreneur. You should be able to understand what are the risks today. The risks of 20 years are not the same risks today. Why? The world has changed. Okay. The technology has changed. You've seen now we are in the area of COVID. Now, as an entrepreneur, what should we do during COVID to become successful? So apart from who is teaching, it's also important that under our education sector, if it is going to teach you to become a successful entrepreneur, we should know what they are teaching you because that is also important. Then how you're being taught. That is also important. So if we're going to teach you to become successful entrepreneur, that must begin from how we are teaching you and how we are preparing you. So today, great entrepreneurs should be prepared mentally, should be prepared physically, should be prepared in a practical manner. So today, we should prepare you practically. So whatever we are going to teach you to become great entrepreneurs, you must be able to practice what we are teaching you. For example, in China, students, the moment you join a university, you start producing a product. And that's why you see things like toothpicks, simple things are made by students in universities. Now, it means the moment you join a university, you start thinking of a product to make. And that product you're making should be a product which can be marketed where you can sell it and make money. So in countries that are developed, students are making money by simply producing simple products that society or community demands. So even here in Uganda, it is not that you join the university and we teach you just the literature. We should be able to teach you how to produce products that society demands. It shouldn't be big products, but should be simple products that your society 
or your community may want. So now at university, we should be able to teach you that, that the moment you join a university, you should start thinking of what the society around you demands. Then you start making such simple products and services that the society around you demands. Now that builds you as an entrepreneur. That builds you strongly. You've seen what are the skills you have? What are the talents you have? Okay, now out of your talents, you should be able to produce a product or you should be able to provide a service and you start making money. Now that is why we must teach you that way, okay? Some of you, you're very talented in sports, you're very talented in um, IT, you have the right skills, but you're not using your skills to make money. So you should, it is now time for you to start thinking on the kind of skill you have today and how you can make money out of it, okay? And how can you start is what we are going to be teaching you today. So now, like we said, the education sector, if we are to teach you to become an entrepreneur, what is fundamental is who is teaching you. Apart from the person teaching you is what are they also teaching you? Apart from what they are teaching you is how are they teaching you to become an entrepreneur, okay? And finally, who is teaching it now? That is very, very important. Now, secondly, even you, the person who we are teaching, are you interested in becoming an entrepreneur or you have no interest? So I want to see what should we do to make you great entrepreneur? Now, apart from the people who are delivering the knowledge to you, but even you as an individual who is receiving this knowledge, are you interested? Because the lecturers will play their part. They will teach you how you should think and how you should react to become great entrepreneurs. But you who we are teaching, are you interested? Because that is also a fundamental question. If you're not interested, it means if you have no passion, then it will be a waste of time, okay? For example, there are a few fundamental thinkers. These are some of the great entrepreneurs. And what do they say? It's not whether we can teach you entrepreneurship, okay, through certain courses, okay? We can do that, but it is now you who we are teaching. Are you ready to understand what we are teaching you? Are you interested? Okay, because for us, we shall come, take off our time, prepare you, teach you, but the person we are teaching is interested. That is very important because we cannot push you to become entrepreneur, you must push yourself. So for us, we can teach you to become good entrepreneurs at Isbat University, but even you, you must have interest. Because if you have no interest, it means it will be a waste of time, okay? Now, those were words of Steve Blake, who says that, yes, it is not, we, it is not a question of whether we can teach you to become an entrepreneur or not, but it is also a question of the person you're teaching, are they interested? Okay, now that is fundamental. Now, what we can teach, now this is what we can teach. We're going to see what we can teach you and what we cannot teach you in the area of entrepreneurship. Now, this is what we can teach. For example, we can teach you how you can negotiate as an entrepreneur, what we call the negotiation skills. We can teach you how you can negotiate so that you're not cheated as an entrepreneur. That one can be taught because those are skills that you must learn. You must learn how to prepare a budget. You must learn how to make simple requisitions. You must learn how to make simple, um, for example, if your simple bids, all that we can teach you how to prepare a bid to government. But now it is upon you. And secondly, we can also teach you how to plan what we call business planning. How do you plan your business? That we can teach you, okay? We can also teach you how to carry out market research. For example, how can you market your products? That one we can teach you very well. At this part, we can teach you how to carry out market research. Then finally, we can also teach you how to prepare a business plan. That can be taught. Now, what universities cannot teach and this is very, very important for you to listen. Remember, what we can teach are negotiations. As an entrepreneur, how do you negotiate to win a contract? 
we can teach you how to plan a business. If you have a business, how do you make certain plans? For example, how do you make risk plans? How do you make economic plans? How do you make um, financial plans? Okay, how do you make human resource plans? That we can teach you. We can also teach you how you make a market research. Okay, how do you research on the market? For example, we can teach you what we call segmentation. Okay, all those we can teach you at university. We can also teach you how to write a business plan because every business has got a different way we can write a business plan for it. But what we cannot teach you, and this is fundamental for you to understand, is one, we cannot teach, we cannot teach at university passion. Now, passion is now you, the individual we are teaching. Do you have passion? Do you really want to become an entrepreneur? Do you want to change society? Do you want to earn money? That should be now you. you that's why it's important that if you're moving into a business, move into a business where you have passion. That even if in the first years you're not making profits, because you have passion, you'll still remain there because you're interested in it. You have passion. Creativity. We cannot teach you to become creative. Now that is you. Because if you have passion, it means you can also improve your creativity. Okay? And secondly, we cannot teach you to take risk. That should be you willing to take the risk. Okay? Because we are going to see one of the characteristics of great entrepreneurs are those that accept to take risks. But what we can teach under risk is how do you take calculated risk? So we cannot teach passion. Passion is now you, the individual. Do you have passion in what you're doing? Do you have passion in the kind of business you're running? Do you have creativity skills? That should be in within you. Are you willing to take risks? Because there are people who may have the capital, but fear to risk it. So are you willing to take risk of your capital? Okay. Then perseverance, for example, even when things are hard, are you willing to stay there and run the business? Because when you listen to all successful stories of great entrepreneurs, they will tell you that they never gave up. Now, some of you, you start a business after two months, you're not making profits, you close it and start another one. Okay, now a great entrepreneur is a person. Now, if you have passion, it means you can pass fear to see that you go through hardships. Now that takes you to accept that you can be resilient and make sure you take on the risk. Okay. Then the vision. For you to be a great entrepreneur begins like we say, passion is you. Now, what is your vision? What is your dream? Great entrepreneurs have dreams. When you look at the Alibabas of today, if you listen to his story, he will tell you he was rejected a hundred times. He brought the idea, nobody understood him. Why? Because for him, he had his own vision. He tried to explain the dream to people. People said, no, this can't work. But because of perseverance, he actually accepted and said, I have a vision. I must be able to be able to achieve my dream. Now that takes you to be able to have a dream to become a great entrepreneur. Now that we cannot teach you at university because everybody in this world has got different dreams and missions and goals. So you must have a dream, what we call a vision. You must be able to have a vision if you are to become a great entrepreneur. Now we cannot teach you to have a vision. A vision is within you, okay? Now I've explained what we can teach and what we cannot teach, okay? Now, what does entrepreneurship mean? Okay, now, when we say entrepreneur, now uh, going by a few definitions and a few scholars, an entrepreneur is a person who is willing, and the word is you must be willing to undertake a risk. Now, when we say taking a risk, what does it mean? You're taking a risk of creating. For example, look at the Alibaba. He took a risk to create. Bill Gates took a risk to create Microsoft. All those great people you're looking at took risks. Now, when we say taking a risk, what does it mean? A risk means you will either lose all the money, lose all the time, or you'll either achieve all 
the dreams or the visions you have. Now that is a risk, which we said we cannot teach you. you it is now you, the individual, who should be able to accept to take <laughs> <laughs> take that risk to create something or you should be able to take that risk to organize something okay or you should be able to take that risk to start your own business so great entrepreneur or an entrepreneur is a person like you who has accepted to undertake a risk okay remember what are you risking you're risking money you're risking time you're risking skills and even risking your life. But all you're doing is because you have a vision, okay? You're trying to create something or you're trying to organize something or you're trying to start your own business in order to achieve certain goals and objectives. So entrepreneurs are those that have accepted to create something, organize something or start their own business. You take a risk to construct a house. You take a risk you carry out a business of gardening. You take a risk, okay? All these are risks that you are taking. So entrepreneurs, you take a risk to start farming. All these are risks you are taking. And remember, because it's a risk, you can either gain out of it or you can lose out of it. Now, we cannot teach you on how to either say, I'm ready to take a risk or not. You should be ready to take a risk. But what we can teach you is how do you take calculated risks. So entrepreneurs, those are individuals that are willing to undertake risk of creating something, organizing something, or running their own business. Okay. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you should be ready to take a risk. Okay. At the end of the day, the Bill Gates you people wish to become took risks. The Alibabas, you people wish to become, took risks. Okay, so all these people took risks to be what they are. Now, you as an individual today, you must be able to take a risk. Okay, start something, that's a risk. But at the end of the day, when you achieve your goals and visions, you become happy. So you cannot become happy if you have not accepted to take a risk. Okay. Now, as we move along is today, like we have said, being an entrepreneur is something new, something very good, okay, and something you must accept because all countries develop because of entrepreneurs. Countries like Uganda, even those that are developed, are countries which have developed because they have people that took risks, okay? So are you willing to take a risk today to develop your country? Are you willing to take a risk today to start a business that will, you will benefit from, even your family benefits from? Now that takes passion, like we said, which we can't teach, okay? Now, as a result, demand for entrepreneurship around the world is growing, okay? So, so many countries, that's why you see that governments even give grants, they even encourage you to come and take up these loans, why? Because when, Countries develop because of entrepreneurs. All countries around the world develop because of entrepreneurs. Those people who are willing to take the risks. So are you willing to take a risk to ensure that your country grows? Are you willing to take a risk to ensure that you solve a community problem and gain out of it? Okay, now those are entrepreneurs, okay? Now, like we said, entrepreneurs are of different categories. Maybe some of you already, you're entrepreneurs, but you don't know the kind of entrepreneur you are. So entrepreneurs are also in categories or in different types. The first one, we have what we call the classic entrepreneurs. Now, when we say classic entrepreneurs, who are these entrepreneurs? So we're going to be able to learn about the classical entrepreneurs. Then we should also be able to understand we have got what we call the serial entrepreneurs. Now, who are these serial entrepreneurs? Then finally, they are what we call social entrepreneurs. Now, where do you fall today? For example, some of you, you're already running businesses. You've already risked capital. But where do you fall? Are you a classical entrepreneur? Are you a serial entrepreneur? Are you a social 
entrepreneur. So that one we should be able to know. Now, when we say classical entrepreneur, what do we mean by classical entrepreneur? Now, a classical entrepreneur is an entrepreneur who, first of all, does a lot of research to identify a business opportunity. Okay? Now, if you're a person who identified a business, for example, when COVID started, you realize that, oh, there could be an opportunity for me to make masks. So it means for you who identifies a business opportunity and then you avail resources or you invest resources in that opportunity and you start earning profits out of it, it means you are a classic entrepreneur. For you, you only look for business opportunity and then invest in them to be able to make profits. Now, such entrepreneurs are what we call the classical entrepreneurs. These ones will only invest where there is a business opportunity. Where they don't see an opportunity, they don't risk investing. Okay, so are you a classical entrepreneur who only invests when there's a business opportunity and you allocate resources to expand that opportunity in order to gain profits out of it? Now, those are what we call the classical entrepreneurs. They only look at investing in business opportunities. Where there's no business opportunity, they will never risk investing. Okay, And then, uh, like we said, for you to be a classical entrepreneur, it means you must be able to identify business opportunities. Now, that takes you to do a lot of research. Okay, To identify a business opportunity requires you to do a lot of research. And that's why you don't sleep because you must be researching every day to find out where is this opportunity. And then when you get that opportunity, you risk all the resources because with an hope of being able to earn out of it. And what you're looking at earning is the profit. Okay? Or you're a kind of what we call a serial entrepreneur. Now, this serial entrepreneur, these ones don't look at business opportunity. For them, what they do is they start several businesses. All the time you're starting new businesses. For them, they are looking at starting new businesses. Okay, and their main focus is not to grow those businesses. For you, your aim is to start that business. After some time, you sell it off and move at starting another business. So are you that kind of entrepreneur? Remember, a classical entrepreneur for him, he looks at only investing when there is a business opportunity. But a serial entrepreneur is not looking at a business opportunity. For him, he looks at starting so many businesses. Now, his main objective is not to grow the businesses. His main objective is to ensure that he can sell them off after some time, especially when they reach a certain level of maturity, he sells them off and moves into a new business. Now, there are such entrepreneurs who look at starting so many businesses, sell them off when they grow and move into something new. Okay, those are so many today. And these are some of the examples of such entrepreneurs. For them, they look at starting so many businesses. When these businesses reach maturity, they sell them off and move into starting a new business. Now, all these are examples of such entrepreneurs. Okay? Or you are what we call a social entrepreneur. Now, a social entrepreneur is different from the serial and classical entrepreneur. These ones, their main aim is not to look for business opportunity. Instead of looking for business opportunity, for them, they are looking at a social problem. These are entrepreneurs who look at solving community problems. Now, when you solve a community problem, at the end of the day, you'll earn out of it. Okay, for example, today, the entire community, we are all struggling with COVID-19. Now, there are those who have come up with the vaccines. There are those that have come up with masks. Why? Because you, you're looking at protecting your community. But out of solving a social problem, you're able to earn out of it. Okay? Now, those are what we call the social entrepreneurs. These ones, their main aim is not to identify a business opportunity. Their main aim is, is to identify a social problem. They invest in that social problem 
to ensure that they reduce or mitigate it forever. But out of mitigating that social problem, they are able to benefit out of it because they are able to sell their products. But the main aim is not to make profits. Their main aim is to ensure that the community or society actually is safe from such a community problem. But out of that, they are able to earn out of it. Now, those are what we call the social entrepreneurs, OK? So we are almost, uh, well, now this is an example of uh, Shanin who came up with, so she solved so many social problems in India, but out, out of solving these social problems in India, she was able to earn a lot of money out of solving community-based problems. So today, you as an individual, are you looking at solving community problems or are you looking at being a classical entrepreneur who will only invest when there are opportunities or you are a CEO type of entrepreneur who looks at starting so many businesses, then after some time you sell them off to ensure that they grow. So um, I'm seeing so many questions. So for now we shall pause and move into a few questions, then we can proceed from there. Okay, so anybody with a question before we can proceed? Members, anybody with a question? The lines are open. Anybody with a question? You can unmute, then ask a question. Then from there, we can proceed. Members, anybody with a question before we proceed? Please unmute and ask. Uh, I could just like to, to get some clarification about uh, the first type of entrepreneur. For you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you look, you're asking about the classical entrepreneurs? Yeah, about the classical entrepreneur. Yes, now, um, Caleb, a classical entrepreneur, like we said, for him, he will only invest if there is a business opportunity. For example, when COVID-19 came, you realize that people realized, okay, to show uh, one way of mitigating this disease is by people putting on face masks. Secondly, by people using sanitizer. Now, such an entrepreneur who sees an opportunity of making masks and selling them, or buying sanitizer and you sell it to community, you're able to make money out of it, is what we call a classical entrepreneur. We'll only start a business if there's an opportunity of making money. If there's no opportunity of making money, then there's no need to start a business. That is what we call a classical entrepreneur. Very good question. Any other question? Now, someone is asking, what are the courses I can do? Okay, for you to be able to expand your knowledge in the area of entrepreneurship, you can, when you join Isbat University, you can apply for courses in the area, in the faculty of business. For example, you can do BBA. Now we have got um, BBA International. Okay, we have got Bachelor of Business Administration in International Business. So when you come here, you can apply for that. That one, we shall be able to develop your skills of becoming great entrepreneur, okay? By applying for Bachelor of Business Administration, okay, international business. Or you can also be able to come here and apply for Bachelor of Business Administration in international marketing, okay? So, and also you can also be able to come here and apply for Bachelor of Commerce, what we call BCom, or you can also come here and apply for Bachelor of Applied Accounting. Those are courses which we can also teach you to become great entrepreneurs. We have also got um, Bachelor of Hotel Management for those that want to uh, specialize in the area of hotel management. We can also teach you that. We can also teach you, um, for example, that we have a new course we call Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality for those who want to come here and uh, learn about how to handle tourists and how to also grow your area, okay? Any other question? Any other question? That's, that was a good question from Caleb. Anybody with a question? 
Please unmute and ask a question. Any other person with a question? Any other person with a question? Yes, Oscar, you're asking a question? Any other person with a question? Okay, for those who cannot unmute and ask, you can type your question, then I'll be able to respond. Yes, any other person with a question about entrepreneurship, about running a business, about becoming successful in the business you're running? Any other person with a question? Any other person with a question before we end? For those who want to ask, please unmute, eh? then you ask. Yes, um, Patrick has a, yes, Patrick, what is the question? You can unmute and ask. Yes, Patrick. Patrick, you have a question. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, My question is, um, what causes like most graduates who graduate in business courses, most of them you find that uh, they, 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 okay, they don't apply what they have learned. So, for example, I interacted with some few and they say that most of what they studied has not been relevant to them. Yet they studied maybe in business or some other courses related to business. Okay. So that's my. Okay, that's a very good question, Patrick. But if I can uh, go back to the PowerPoint, let, let me just go back. This is what I tackled. Um, uh, just that, that's a good question. So let me just go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, then I show you where we started. So this is where we started about um, whether we can teach you to become a, an entrepreneur or not, okay? Now, Patrick, this is where we started. We say that for you to become, for us to be able to teach you and be able to learn these skills, okay? Like we said, there were arguments that people are saying, people are born entrepreneurs or we can make you to become an entrepreneur. Now, if we are to make you become an entrepreneur. For example, here at ISBAT, we make you to become an entrepreneur. Now, how do we make you to become an entrepreneur? Now, that begins from who is teaching you. Like I said, for you to be able to apply your skills depends on the person teaching you these skills. For example, you should be taught by a person who, one, is running a business. He understands the business dynamics. He also has the skills of what? Of the business. Then apart from who is teaching you is, secondly, what are they teaching you? So today you come here or you go to different universities, you apply for courses, but you realize that they are teaching a lot of, they are teaching you a lot of theory. Yet today, entrepreneurs should be taught practical skills. That's why I told you that in countries that are developed like China, the moment you join, a university, you start making simple products that the society around you can be able to buy and you start making money. So the person teaching you, we need to know who is teaching you. And secondly, the person teaching, what is he teaching you? Are they teaching you in a practical way or they are teaching you more of the theory? Because it's important that you get the practical bit of it. And secondly is how are they teaching you? Because like today, like we said, the courseworks should be courseworks that require you to be able to make a product. Then we mark you basing on what you've made, not what you can write. So like we have said, we need to think about the education sector if we are to make you great entrepreneurs. And that begins from who is teaching you, what are they teaching you, and how are you being taught? Okay, that's a very good question. Now, someone is saying, can someone open his small scale business and uh, ensures it with 
insurance company. Yes, now that is what we said. We can only, like we said, we cannot teach you to accept taking your risk, but we can take you, we can teach you to take what we call calculated risks. Now, taking calculated risks is where now we teach you on how you can apply for insurance for your business. For example, taking a calculated risk today means that any business venture you want to go into, you must also think of insurance. In case things go bad, the insurance company will be able to compensate you. Now, that is what we mean by taking calculated risks. Okay. And then someone is saying, what is the difference between um, what is the difference between Bachelor of Science in Economics and uh, Bachelor of Arts in Economics? Now, Bachelor of Science in Economics, this is now where you're going more into understanding the dynamics of the business. For example, you're moving into how the entire economy operates. But if you're going to Bachelor of Arts in Economics, you're looking at the architecture as aspect of the economy. Okay, but science means you want to understand how the economy runs. For example, now that moves into different dynamics of government sectors. That is into the science of economics. But into the arts of economics, here you're looking into uh, the moment government inter, uh, implements its projects, how, what is the impact of that onto the economy? Now that is into the arts of economics, but the science is how this inter before the implementation, what is behind there? What is the planning? How do you plan the economy to ensure that it achieves its economic objectives? Okay, any other person with a question? How many years do these uh, business courses take? Now here at ISBAT, all our business courses are three-year courses, okay? Because in every year we have got two semesters. And yet in total, there are six semesters that you must study to get your degree. So it means you'll be studying for three years if you came here for a bachelor of business administration in international business or international marketing. And any other course in our faculty, they are three-year courses. Okay. Any other person with a question before we can uh, before we end? Any yes, other uh, good morning to everyone. Morning, boss. Yes, uh, the, my name is uh, Guinera. I, I had a question. Yes. As we can see, the, the world is uh, changing very, very fast. And uh, most parents in Uganda maybe would have preferred a more practical based education more than a theoretical one. So my question is that I present to the ISPAT University, how, how best have you inculcated this practical part of these business subjects into, into your curriculum at the university? As you can see, trends are changing. The world needs more practical best people. Okay, very good question, Oscar. Now, here at university, for example, like I told you, I've got, <laughs> so, we have got so many different courses. And the courses, we try as much as possible to make them practical. For example, if you came here for a Bachelor of Hotel Management, the moment you join us, we teach you as you're working because we have got hotels that uh, we signed up with, for, exa for example, Skies Hotel and um, Protea Hotel. So the moment you come here, we teach you half day, then the other half day you go and start learning the skills already at the hotels, okay? So you're learning the theory and then after lunch you go and work. So it means you're implementing even the practical skills. So here we teach you as you're learning. Okay, very good. Any other person with a question? Someone says, how can you start an entrepreneurship if you don't know anything? For example, you like to, now, like I said, entrepreneurship, we can teach you, but there are things we can't teach you. Number one is passion. Being an entrepreneur begins with the passion. Now, what passion do you have? What skill do you have? What talent do you have? If you don't have the passion, secondly, around the community you stay in, are there problems you're seeing? Now, if you realize that the community, for example, you live in a community where people just dump garbage anywhere and they walk away, you can become an entrepreneur by simply moving door to door, collecting that rubbish. 
That is what we call an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is not about having a very big company. You can start small as you grow. So entrepreneurship begins with passion. <laughs> having a passion, it also begins with you solving community problems. Okay, any other person with a question? Okay, any other person with a question before we proceed? Is it only business courses that are offered? No, we also have IT courses. Because, like I told you, when you look at Bill Gates, he came up with the idea of software. So we also have a lot of practical courses in IT at the university. So get time, if possible, come at the university. We shall take you through the different courses we have. But like I said, it begins with you. What is your passion? What is your vision as you? Okay, if your vision, if your passion is IT, we have got courses in IT which can help you. If your passion is business, we have got plenty of business courses which can also help you as an individual. Okay, any other person with a question before we proceed? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question, members? All right, so if there are no questions, allow me to end here. Please endeavor to come to the university for application because we are starting the semester next month, especially for you, the new students. So please come and get, uh, get the admission forms. We are open Monday to Saturday from nine to four every day, from Monday to Saturday. So you can come here, pass around, we have got counselors that can take you through the different courses you want to undertake. They will advise you accordingly. For example, if you chose this course, what will you cover? How long will it take? How much will it cost? All that is available. So when you come to the reception, simply ask for help. We shall help you. Okay, any other question? Okay, okay. if there are no questions, Okay, so before we go, um, there's a video I want to play for you. So there's a video I want to share with you. Okay, so you can be able to see, some of you don't know the campus, how it looks. So I'm going to show you how our campus looks right now through a video. So I'm going to play a video for you to be able to see how the campus looks like. Okay, so this is how East Park University looks like, okay? This is not a garden. So this is our campus. For those of you who have never come here, this is how the campus looks like. Maybe I should share with volume sound. No recording. Yeah, it's not recording. Now please, not recording. Yes, first this one. Hmm? This one. This one.
Thank you.